Welcome back. Is everyone having a great conference? Yes. How about the event at the Mill City last night? The, fl the flower tower of power? I mean, like the best museum ride I've ever been on. <laughs> I don't know about all of you, but I feel really lucky to be here in Minneapolis. Um, with that, I'd like to start by thanking our organizers. There's a long list, but it starts with our fearless leader, Eric Westra. Our program committee, our scholarship committee, sponsor committee, logistical support here in Minneapolis, Minis uh, sorry, volunteers, photographers, catering staff, child care, the captioning and AV team, and of course the McNamara Center staff. Please give them all a hand. Thank you so much for your hard work. I'd also like to recognize our scholars. Where are they this year? All right. Um, this year we're excited to welcome 25 scholars to the conference. We have scholars from seven states and six countries, including Guinea, France, Uganda, Costa Rica, Israel, and Nigeria. So let's give them a hand. We didn't do this yesterday, but um, how many of you are attending your first State of the Map US? Can I get a show of hands? That is amazing. Can you keep them up high? Like, look at that. Welcome. <laughs> I have to say, I think that's one of the strongest responses I've seen on that question. So uh, welcome, and I really hope you all come back next year. So over the next 10 minutes or so, depending on how fast I speak and how nervous I am, um, I'm going to talk about not only where we are uh, standing today, I'm going to share some ideas for the future, but also how I hope we can all work together to realize that future. Your input is integral. And at the end of my talk, you're all going to be invited to participate in a conversation about where we can go. Uh, we're going to ask for your feedback, feedback, your questions, and your ideas. So as I'm talking, start thinking about anything you'd like to ask or say to the entire room. As Ian mentioned yesterday, it is a milestone year for OpenStreetMap Project. 15 years. And I know many of you in this room and watching this video in like two years or something uh, have been part of this project since the beginning. And I'm pretty sure we've scaled beyond our founders' wildest dreams. OpenStreetMap has one million edits a day. I just learned that from Jennings and Seth this, yesterday. So. Uh, we are curating the only publicly available worldwide geospatial database. And at the same time, doing a lot of innovative, creative, and important things with that data. Everybody can like pat themselves on the back for that. <laughs> So many people have contributed their time, their energy, passion to help bring the map in the community where we are today. Thank you. OpenStreetMap US and I would not be standing here in this role without all of your efforts. You want to give them a hand? <laughs> it's late in the day. We have to keep moving, right? We're going to get too tired. Um, so people have asked me, like, what's it like you're an executive director? So I'm going to share a little bit of that. I have to say the first few months have been quite a ride. As a former board member, a member of the TeachOSM steering committee, I'm not a stranger to OpenStreetMap. So when I stepped into the role, I thought, yeah, I kind of have an idea of what this could entail. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Over the last five months, I've learned how much more there is to know about this OpenStreetMap ecosystem. If you haven't figured it out yet, I mean, we're really big. And that's the beautiful thing about OpenStreetMap. It's the number of opportunities that come along with this free open source database and this expansive, wonderful open community. I'd pair that with the overwhelming thing about this OpenStreetMap, the abundance of 
opportunities, and all the wonderful people who make this open community. As you probably know, we have no shortage of ideas. And as I mentioned yesterday, in this role, I want to hear from all of you. Over the past few months, I have been listening and learning. Many people have already generously shared their time with me. And even over the last two days, I have had the opportunity to meet and talk with many of you in this room. I've learned a lot. I've also been asked a lot of questions. I'll give you a few examples of the last few months. A few weeks ago, I got a message on Slack from a mapper in Florida. She wanted to talk about her work in conservation using OpenStreetMap and offered to contribute a blog post. Through our conversations, I learned she didn't know any other mappers in her area. I started thinking, here's, how do we connect her? How do we help this person who is spending her time improving the map and advocating for the project? How does she feel like a part of the global community? And yet she's working down there in a silo. I received an email a few months back from a mapper in Pittsburgh. Miles, are you here? He reached out to me to ask how can he start to build a local community in Pittsburgh around OpenStreetMap. It's a wonderful question. And just yesterday, Albert from San Francisco. Albert, are you in the room? I hope you're still here. Uh, came up to me and asked, how can I participate in OpenStreetMap and support the community beyond mapping? I believe OpenStreetMap US here is here to facilitate that how. We are here to be part of the how. How do we better connect the 500 people in the US that map every single day? How do we support local communities? How do we retain our new mappers? How do we improve our diversity? How can we communicate better? I want to see the OpenStreetMap community in the US grow and thrive. In practice, this means more members, more mappers, higher attendance at State of the Map US, and lo more local events. We need to build partnerships and strengthen collaborations with government, with educators, and with adjacent communities. I think we can find ways to better support our community groups, make it easier to organize, to communicate, to learn how to edit, to validate, and to have a mapathon. But I'm not up here to answer all of those questions. Uh, I think this progress requires all of us in this room and watching today. But I can say that OpenStreetMap US is here to support and facilitate your, your efforts. Uh, we are here to advocate for OpenStreetMap and help connect the dots in this massive network. I'd like to streamline our communications and make it easier to navigate and plug into our incredible ecosystem. I'd like to grow and diversify our membership. We currently have 268 members. How many people in the room are members? Did you even know that you could be a member? <laughs> We could double that number today, but I also want to make sure that you see the benefits of your membership. What programs are we running? How are we supporting your local groups? I have a few actions in mind, but like I said, this is still a listening and learning and, and hearing all of your input as well kind of phase. But I'd like to start a few committees and create places for volunteers to support OpenStreetMap in new ways. We have all experienced the work that the State of the Map US Committee can accomplish. It's incredible, right? It's a pretty good conference. <laughs> Imagine if we had a few committees focusing volunteer efforts on our communications, supporting these local groups, welcoming new people, and helping to organize all over the country. We can make an incredible in impact. Excuse me. I would also like to increase the visibility of both the organization and the map. At 15, we are a mature movement, but we are not as visible as we should be. OpenStreetMap is kind of still a pretty well-kept secret in many places. And I see it as part of my role to advocate for OpenStreetMap in the US. I want to understand why people are not yet part of the OpenStreetMap community. I want to allocate resources to outreach, education, and activism. How many people in this room has tried to explain OpenStreetMap to your friends or to your family? How does that go over? <laughs> I want to help make that easier. <laughs> OpenStreetMap US was founded to facilitate the state of the map US. 
In nine years as an organization, our ambitions have grown. We want to have programs, hold events, help build tools, and provide support and direction for people new to the map. But all of this will take time, collaboration, and resources. It's an exciting time to be part of OpenStreetMap, and there's so much for us to do. I invite all of you, this is where I ask you to do things. <laughs> I invite all of you to tell someone about OpenStreetMap. Join a new committee, meet up with other mappers in your town, run for the board in February, teach someone new to map, and I challenge you to stay in touch with everyone you've met after this conference. It's gonna take all of us, but I believe we can navigate the rest of our teenage years with grace. I'm grateful to be in this position, in awe of this community, and so excited to see what we can accomplish. Thank you. I'm not gonna take any questions yet, so please hold those in your mind. Um, next, I would like to take some time to hear from all of you, but to help lead this conversation, I would like to invite the wonderful OpenStreetMap US board up to join me, Ian Dees, Joan Atkins, Stephen Johnson, Min Nguyen, and Alyssa Wright. You wanna come on up? The podium is goals. Thank you. Where's the clicker? There it is. How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> I like it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the state of the states. Um, we're gonna start with some hard numbers first. Um, these are just some uh, unofficial but accurate counts of uh, the, some interesting uh, pieces of OpenStreetMap data by state in, in uh, OpenStreetMap. So uh, this is just a regular old count of OpenStreetMap data in, in, per state. Um, you'll, I, I don't think this is by per capita, right? Jennings. Jennings. <laughs> Jennings helped us with these, uh, and I am pretty sure that these are just total. Yes, it says total right there. There are some of these that are per capita. That's why I'm confused. So um, this is basically a, a map of population, you might notice. But there's plenty of places, like Wisconsin and Illinois, that aren't necessarily super popular or populous, that have lots of uh, total objects in OpenStreetMap. You might also notice that there's a lot of green over on the right uh, on the East Coast um, that doesn't necessarily align with what you might think of the population, meaning that there's more uh, OpenStreetMap data in the states over on the East Coast. There's more people, but maybe that means there's more uh, OpenStreetMap community there. So this is also a similar map, but for just for highways, not for all of OpenStreetMap data. Texas, it's a big state. It also has a lot of roads. Um, an interesting thing to me is Nevada, where there are a lot of tiger roads that uh, might not actually be roads. This would be a great place to spend time looking around for tiger cleanup. This is uh, normalized by the area of the state. And so um, this indicates that there's more mappers, more mapper activity over on the East Coast. Um, and so if you see your state up here that, and it's uh, not green, or yeah, not green, um, the, that indicates that you might want to spend a little bit more time looking at highways, or you could uh, work on that part of, uh, of OpenStreetMap with your community. This is not adjusted to population but it's the total number of buildings. And so you can see that California is way up there, lots of buildings uh, traced in, that, in California. But similar to uh, what we saw before with total number of objects, Wisconsin and Illinois are pretty high up there. Um, and that's, that doesn't necessarily follow with population. That's interesting. Um, you didn't just go colorblind. This is, this, that's what I thought when I saw this. Um, this is buildings, but adjusted per uh, capita. And um, 
I, I thought it was kind of interesting that North Dakota lit up there. There aren't a whole lot of people in North Dakota, but there's a lot of buildings mapped. Um, and one other interesting thing about this one is that Illinois, um, although I imported all the buildings in Chicago like 10 years ago, it's still not up there in terms of the number of buildings per capita. Uh, there's a whole lot of Illinois that is not mapped outside of Chicago. Uh, addresses, one of my favorite things in OpenStreetMap. Um, Wisconsin, our friendly neighbors to the east here in Minnesota, have a very uh, limited number of addresses. Um, good job, Minnesota. Addresses. Um, and then we get into the really important data. <laughs> um, laundromats. Notice Alaska representing on uh, laundromats. Good job, Alaska. And then same thing with dry cleaners. For some reason, the, the Pacific Northwest really shines here. And ice cream. This one is really surprising to me. Um, Wisconsin should be number one. Why isn't it, Wisconsin mappers? Come on. Uh, at least be, I, I, I don't know, I can't see the numbers, but they should at least be beating California. Um, there's a, a dairy rivalry, sorry, if that context isn't there. Um, next, we're going to uh, run through some uh, feedback that we got when we reached out to the folks in these states. Um, I, I think we will be talking to you in a moment, but we also want to uh, highlight some things that we heard from people in particular. Does it go up or down? It goes to the right. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Maggie indicated earlier uh, in, the, in the presentation, uh, it's imperative as the leadership of the organization as board and uh, executive director that we're responsive to your needs and that we're actually listening to you. Uh, so during the conference, Maggie's uh, collected a few quotes and we wanted to uh, share a few of those with you so that we could kind of stimulate a bit of discussion uh, coming up. We want to open up the floor as we go through the presentation here and, and have it be a little bit more conversational as we go through. So um, we have a series of quotes here. Um, Scott um, shared that uh, anything that could be used to aid in mapping people, use OSM solutions over Google Maps uh, in Phoenix Metro. This is prominently a lack of residential building outlines and addresses, and I like this particular sentence. Next, street complete is also really easy that, uh, that even mapping street material types, etc., triggers the dopamine. And I like the dopamine as a, uh, as a uh, motivator for mapping. I think that's, that's appropriate here. Uh, Diane shared that here is an OSM in the wild story. I do voluntary ski patrol. Ski patrol, isn't that a great uh, application for OpenStreetMap? And I was happy to discover that our patrol uses the OSM base map for their mountain operations when they're locating issues that need to be addressed. I told one of the head guys that they could be an OSM editor and correct anything that they felt needed fixing in the map. I love that. Also check out osmsnowmap.org, which I love. I think that I, there's a great confederation of open X maps around here, um, open drone map, open historical map, open railway map, and now we have open snow map, so I wasn't even aware of that. I'm happy to get this one. Uh, Levente has shared that someone tagged Miami Beach as a beach. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I was hoping to find a huge natural beach, but unfortunately it's still a city surrounded by water and I verified it in the field, love it. Florida has a very small and dispersed community. So what can we do about that, Floridians? More like a collection of individuals mapping on their own. So we're in silos here. Tried activation through the community imports with little luck. Hmm. So we have some work to do there. Min, uh, did you share this? Uh, I guess I can quote myself, sure. Quote yourself. Uh, <laughs> Here's the man who said I'm, I'm ad living here, by the way. Uh, no, volunteers imported 295,000 buildings with addresses in Cincinnati and Hamilton County, increasing the number of buildings more than fivefold. Um, and that's, uh, I think the team is something like five or six, a dozen people, something like that. So, so yeah. Alex uh, has shared that I haven't found much uh, of any organized mapping community in Maine. Same with Florida. I'm working with someone toward an import of E91 addresses and roads. It might be six months out. We're currently evaluating the quality of the data source. I'm working with someone else to expand the OSM toolset in C Sharp. 
We're about to release version one of a C-sharp client for the OpenStreetMap API. I'm working on a tool to streamline automated edits that may never get used. Oh, that's so sad. To get familiar with OSM, I manually mapped a very small town, Limestone in northern Maine. And I, you know, that's a uh, often overlooked way to um, get familiar with mapping is pick a small town in rural America. They desperately need it. And um, you can map a, a small town with a very short time. Lisa from Mississippi shared that uh, I participate as a hobby because I love mapping and to map for the hot tasks because they are listed as priorities which I find useful. Ian, like the people back in Minnesota, like the people in Minnesota, mapping in Minnesota is quiet. <laughs> but check out the ball of America. It is bopping. <laughs> We're starting an open map time chapter in Duluth. Come join us, says Zach. Also, Duluth is beautiful. Beautiful, sorry. Arlo shared, uh, be careful to check your editor's software's upload settings. Two contributors in a co-mapping session found hundreds of untagged nodes in a rural area. They were able to be used as the basis for productive mapping in a manner similar to following a GPS trace, but the original labor of the uploader in tagging had been lost to a dropped connection. Well, flaky internets. And Austin from South Carolina shared that I started a few years ago from mapping my neighborhood, then town and county. That's the way it works. You go out in concentric circles, right? We worked with local government and have used tools like the Hot Task Manager and Microsoft Buildings to great results. Good. And have been all the while working on processes to keep the data fresh. We're really proud of it. OSM went from the worst roadmap to the best. And there's Austin's diary entry there. So this is, um, this is a smattering of observations that we've had uh, during the course of the conference. And each one of these tells a little bit about, um, gives us a little bit of insight into what we need to do to be responsive to our membership and to you. But um, it's also good, uh, it's a good um, fodder for ideas for moving forward. So with that, I turn it over to Min and we'll engage with question and answer time. All right, so uh, Stephen just broke the number one rule of PowerPoints, which is that you don't read quotes off a slide. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try to, uh, to recover the mood in the room by having you all participate. Um, and I've got several questions here that you actually have to answer. Um, the first one is, uh, and so uh, please raise your hand um, if, uh, if you identify with one of these questions. Uh, we will not be taking, a, taking names, so don't worry. Um, uh, I have edited in OpenStreetMap. So raise your hand if you've opened, uh, edited in OpenStreetMap. Awesome. We're going to take a minute and they're going to go out and ask people. Oh, okay. Between statements. Yes, uh, we're actually going to go, uh, go out and uh, um, uh, take some follow-up questions uh, or yeah, ask some follow-up questions of folks who uh, responded. So raise your hands back up if you've op edited in OpenStreetMap. All right. So, all right. Um, so uh, let's see. Pick, right there, pick someone. Right yeah. I saw him. All right. Jonah, he's right there. Brian Housel, he raised his hand. Ah, okay, okay. You're a goodie pig. Hello. All right. So you've edited open I have. Now. What was the last thing you edited? Uh, the Mall of America, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Mall of America looks pretty bopping, I got to say. It's bopping. Um, <laughs> and most of the POIs in there are linked to brand wiki data, but there are a few that are not, such as that Hagen Dazs that I was showing off in my presentation. So. Yep. Um, cool. I did it. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, um, so I'm going to follow up real quick. Uh, how many of you have edited uh, in OpenStreetMap today? All right. Cool. Thanks for your dedication. Um, editing during a conference. <laughs> Even with our internet connection here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Number two. I have cleaned up a tiger mess. All right, all right, we're, we're getting, getting some, okay, uh, let's see, find somebody, find somebody. Tiger mess. Sure. Tiger yes. Sure. Okay. Can, can I, you describe the tiger mess? Uh, the tiger mess was some rural Wisconsin roads around where my parents live. Cool. Yeah. So. How did you fix it? Yeah. How did you, how did you fix the, 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 the mess? Uh, just using the aerial imagery. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty straightforward and I knew that the aerial imagery was, was current. So. Good on you for doing that. And uh, this is an example we can all follow. Um, let's see. 
Uh, I have taught someone else to map. How many of you have done that? All right, uh, pick someone. <laughs> Over there, Jonah. On the edge, yeah, right there. <laughs> Um, so I run a number of meetup groups and I also work at an academic library. So I try to let students know OSM exists. Awesome. Uh, this is sort of related. Uh, I have tried to explain OSM to family and friends. I know we asked that uh, earlier, but I just want to, you know, we want to follow up on that now. All right. Okay, so yes. Stick the microphone in somebody's face. <laughs> uh, mostly my mom still thinks I'm a geologist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta try that one. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I organize an event in my town. How many folks have organized events? All right. All right. These are, these are very dedicated OSMers here. All right. Um, Abdullah Diallo from Guinea. Uh, it's not just an event. Every, uh, you know, uh, in a year, uh, I organize a lot of training in my city, sometimes beyond my city. So I do it a lot of time. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, we asked this earlier. Um, uh, I am a member of OSMUS. All right. Sorry. How about Alyssa behind you? Alyssa. Behind, yeah, you. behind you. Behind you. Hi. I'm sad to say that I joined up to get tickets for this. Good. <laughs> we we hope we hope you will find it a worthwhile investment, and I do. Uh, uh, glad glad to hear it. Uh, so related to that. Uh, I am a member of OSMF, the OpenStreetMap Foundation, the international one. All right, we have, we have some there. Jonah, you want to find someone? Hi. Um, yeah, can you, can you talk about why you, why you joined? Let's see. I uh, have been attending the international conferences for quite some time and uh, thought it would be good to join the foundation just to get more insight of how it's run, uh, who's in charge, and some of the issues that they have to deal with, um, and also being allowed to vote in yep. the board elections. Yep, so just to clarify to everyone, there's two foundations, the o OSM US and uh, OSMF, um, and uh, you can be a member of both. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, stand up if you are at this conference. <laughs> All right. All right, stretch. All right. <laughs> Um, now sit down if uh, you are not at State of the Map US 2018. So stay standing if you were at that conference in 2018. All right, all right. Uh, oh yeah, it, uh, 20, that was 2018 in Denver. Uh, uh, sorry, De Detroit, the other D, sorry. <laughs> Detroit. Um, Okay, now uh, stay standing if you were at Save the Map 2017 in Boulder, Colorado. All right. Yep. Stay standing if you were at uh, Save the Map 2016 in Portland? Yeah. Seattle. Sorry, <laughs> Seattle. It's late. All right. Uh, okay, we have a few diehards here. Um, how about uh, uh, Save the Map 2015 in, Washington, uh, in uh, New York City? Sorry? I, I can't hear you, sorry. Heckling. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was at the, uh, 2015 was at the UN, yeah, so. You've been heckled. All right. Uh, this, so, so folks uh, who have been uh, at State of the Map 2014 actually predate me. Uh, anyone at State of the Map 2014? Yeah, yes it does, yeah. All right. Yeah, I, 
I gotta sit down, okay. <laughs> um, uh, 2013, anybody? Uh, 2013, where was 2013? San Francisco. All right, uh, and 2012? That was the important one. Okay. All right. Wow. Should we keep on going? Keep going. All right. 2011. So that was Denver. All right. We get set. Yeah. Who? Who? Who is still? All right. Who's still standing back there? Okay. All right. All right. So that was. So that was 2011. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, 2010. Atlanta, Georgia is the first one we held. There's 65 people there. <laughs> All right, I think we have a winner. Jim, you get the microphone. <laughs> Anything you want to do with it. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> I think that OpenStreetMap is really cool. And <laughs> back in when it started, it, it really started at WearCamp. The second WearCamp is where we kind of pulled this together. It was uh, Thea, Kate, and Serge who got together to form an organization to build this. And that was back in the days of CloudMade when they were out trying to pull people in. And I guess that's how I got pulled into this. Um, CloudMade, I read something in the newspaper that CloudMade came to Boston and ran a mapping party. And I was just like, that's so cool. I totally want to go to that. Why don't these things exist? So I looked it up and I saw in two weeks there was one in New York City. So I got my bicycle, I threw it on a bus, took it to New York, and I biked around all of... Uh, mostly around Central Park, and I added all the roads in Central Park and started adding a lot of stuff in, in Manhattan. And that was before we had aerial imagery or anything you could add to the map. So you just had to have a GPS, and you maybe went around twice on your bike, and you added it to the map. And there was a big push to get people who mapped the whole lot to come out to Wear Camp so we could get everybody together and really try to start building something in America out of this, because before that it was mostly uh, European. And it was really cool, and I really liked open source data and mapping, and I thought it was a great fit. And I've been coming back, and I'm glad that these two people up here as well have been here uh, the whole time. So I'd like to hear what they have to say. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy, for letting, you put, letting me put you on the spot there. <laughs> um, I think the next thing we have on our schedule is uh, to throw, um, to throw things uh, open for questions and statements. So I've been asking you a lot of questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is your, uh, we're in the hot seat, and this is your chance to uh, ask questions and to converse or comments or for anything for, uh, for the, our executive director or for any of us board members. Alyssa and Jonah uh, have microphones, and they're are running around. So if you raise, you have a question for any of us, or, or for the board, or, or for um, Maggie in general, please uh, raise your hand, and we'll be happy to field your questions. Even okay. if they're about licensing, we'll take them. <laughs> yeah, stump the, stump the experts. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we got to uh, get a mic. Okay. okay. I'll be quick. Um, what is the number one priority for the board and executive director for the next year? Okay. So for the board, I'm gonna, it's gonna be super easy. It's supporting Maggie. But I think um, it really is whatever, it, we're trying to grow the community and uh, to advocate for OpenStreetMap in the US and to me at least, and I think we, we've talked about it a bunch, but I think in general that means growing the community uh, the number of people at, at State of the Map US, the number of uh, events happening, the, like all of the things, um, more of that. I'm gonna second all of that. Um, yeah, I think the first step is community engagement. 
um, getting everyone really excited about the future of the map, and then reaching out to new communities, finding new people, finding new populations. But yeah, um, more strategic facilitation of volunteer efforts to build community. I have just one brief um, observation. I, I, I think um, I'll be selfish here. I, I am an organizer for Teach OSM, for those of you who don't know. And uh, it may not be the number one priority for, uh, for the board and for uh, Maggie, but um, one of the high priorities for us as a project is to train the next generation of mappers. Um, as we have, you know, how many edits a day? You know, whatever it was, a million edits a day. We have five billion nodes. We have five million registered users. And as the largest publicly available worldwide database, I think we need to um, be training the next uh, group of mappers to fall in our footsteps. So, Alan? I think it would be nice at this conference next year to get to know who lives near us at home. You know, I'd like to know who's here from Massachusetts, if anybody, but maybe a map with our names on it of the United States, because here's a good place to meet people that might live down the street from you and just never met them and they never communicated. Hey, Eric, how hard would it be to print a big eight by 10 foot poster of the map of the world? For tomorrow. For tomorrow. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, Alan. We should, uh, it would be cool if we could pull that off Everybody quickly. Of yeah, we, we have to just figure out how to print it. But, but even next year, for sure. Yeah, it's a good idea. Other questions? Or statements you want to see if other people agree with? Who's yeah, from Massachusetts? So we'll take statements, um, and then if, uh, if there's no, none, then, oh yeah? What should somebody do if they are interested in helping out uh, you guys? Tell me. <laughs> and I'll figure out, we can figure out what the best fit is for you to help. So reach out. Maggie Maps on Twitter. Maggie Maps on Slack. You see a trend here. I'm easy to find. <laughs> and so are these people behind me. Um, and I think you can uh, also email us, team at openstreetmap.us. Um, that will go to all of us, and one of us will direct you in the right place. Um, I think Maggie talked a lot about what uh, some specific things earlier, so like uh, committees. Um, basically, we have a bunch of projects that we want to get done and that we've all talked about and have heard from the community, and it would be great to be able to point people who are excited about working at those things at those projects. So I think people power is where we're missing right now. And so getting people who are excited enough to come here and travel and talk about this stuff to work together on that kind of thing is where is would be great. We have a lot of needs, I think, that, that kind of span a lot of different areas. I'm, I'm thinking like specifically like communications, like, um, like data quality. Um, there's a lot of bits and pieces of projects around the Teach OSM, for example. Um, there's a lot of things that we can, places to plug in. So I think if you're interested in plugging into the project, it would be good, you know, if you send us an email message, we can and tell us what you're interested in, what kind of skills that you have to lend the product project, we can kind of route things and, and help organize these, um, organize the kind of task-oriented uh, committee or working group or whatever we need to attack it, so. I'm mean, going to uh, make it ugly, not ugly. I don't know what the word is. Um, but I'm actually curious what OSMUS's budget is. Where does the money come and where does it go? And then the, maybe the follow-up is what would you do if you had more? Sorry, can you say that again? I was arguing. So what, what's your budget? Sort of where does it come from and where does it go? 
Pr roughly speaking. Yeah. Um, and then what would you do if you had more? Yeah. So um, I'm the treasurer, um, and I'm happy to be the treasurer. We, uh, our budget is roughly, well, we have like uh, $200,000 in the bank. Um, the vast majority of the, mon of the money that we spend and that we take in is related to this event. Um, we make, or sorry, our intake for this event is on the order of uh, $150,000, and our expense for this event is on the order of 100000 This is all, you could search for our uh, name on guidestar.com and see our Form 990s if you'd like to double check my math, because I don't actually know it off the top of my head right now. Um, but that's the order of magnitude for money. Um, if we, uh, what do we spend it on? We, sorry, we spend it on this event, but we also spend it on things like programs, uh, your local mapping groups. If you have a local mapping group, we will uh, pay for food so that you can run your mapping party and not feel bad about paying for pizza. Um, we will, we have uh, travel grants, so if you're, uh, driving somewhere to talk about OpenStreetMap uh, to a, like a local conference or something, we'll pay for your travel. Um, what else is, am I forgetting? So, oh yeah, we have uh, a server. Uh, it's a little bit aged right now, but we have a server that's running and we have resources at like Amazon and whatnot that uh, if you have a technical project in mind that you wanna work on, um, we have some resources available to let you play around with that. Um, we also are able to connect you with folks who can maybe make that easier. Um, again, like, kind of like I said before, we have, uh, we have the resources to help you, we just don't have the people power to do it. So if you have something in mind that you wanna to play with on OpenStreetMap data, or if you have uh, some exciting project that is almost there but just doesn't have a server to run on, let us know. And if we had more money, uh, I think we would uh, try to spend it on people, I think. As in we would hire more people. And more events. And more events. And education. That's Maggie's job. She yeah. should talk about that. <laughs> this is my list. So uh, I'll just add that historically, I mean, like I said in the talk, uh, state of the OpenStreetMap US was originally founded to run State of the Map US. So that has been our funding structure for nine years. And to me, if we are going to grow as an organization, it has to change substantially. So doing you know, annual giving programs, changing up our membership program, and going after some grants to fund specific programs and projects such as Teach OSM, uh, more events, some infrastructure to support local groups, and potentially some new tooling to welcome new mappers. Um, I think that we can all come up with five or six ideas for that money too. So um, I think there's, there's a lot of things in the future that we'd really like to accomplish if we had a bigger budget. And it would be great to have someone to work with on my team uh, to hire as well. Yeah, and I would just like to add, if, if you have ideas uh, of what you'd like to do with more money or where you can, we should, uh, look for uh, more money. I mean, if you have ideas, c come speak to us. I mean, it is definitely a, an important uh, part of, of our work and the sustainability of this work. Hi. So, um, looking ahead to State of the Map US 2020, do you have any announcements to make or any thoughts on so if people are here are interested in hosting, is there, what, what do we do? Okay. We did put out a call for proposals and we got some. Uh, we're still considering what to do. Next year is a milestone year for the organization. It's going to be our 10th birthday. And we've heard some feedback about changing up the way we hold events, having more events or, or different regional events. So right now we're taking different options into consideration, but as, as always, if you have an idea, uh, we'd love to hear it. But no announcements yet. But 
Uh, if you have an idea for where in a, in a, a group uh, that are excited to try to pull something like this off, sorry, not to try, to pull something <laughs> like this off, uh, please do let us know because it, it, it's all about the people and it makes it a lot easier when there's an excited group of folks uh, at the place with the ideas of, and the local knowledge to make it better or to make it run well. We can schedule it for the next five years. <laughs> Other questions? Comments? Back in the back there. Yes. Yeah. I was going to. Mr. Van Exel. So we, we've had a few um, cycles in the past where there's not been a lot of candidates to choose from for board seats. So what are you doing to get more people interested in running for the board and, um, and can shake things up a little bit maybe? Or I don't know if that's needed, but um, yeah, get, get new people interested in, um, in kind of being in your, being in your place also. I, I've personally badgered a lot of people to run for the board. Say that new, again, Jonah. New faces, diverse faces, uh, all kinds of people. We need new faces. That's a great sound. Um, yeah, I think an important thing for me to, to, to think about is that um, the board, to me, is just a bunch of volunteers that spend a whole bunch of time on this. Um, and it would be great if you are excited about OpenStreetMap to, it's a very small step to think, to go from thinking a whole lot about OpenStreetMap, whether it's part of your job or it's just a thing that you do uh, on the side or you're just really excited about it, it's a very small step to go from that to running for the board of OpenStreetMap US or OpenStreetMap Foundation and, and being able to direct money and, uh, and make suggestions uh, that kind of lead to change in the community. And it's a very small step. Like, it's really just putting your name on the wiki and saying that you're excited and kind of describing why you're excited. These are all things that if, that if you're excited about OpenStreetMap, um, it's just a paragraph of words of saying what's in your head. <laughs> and so um, that's all a, a very, um, you're a very small step away from making a, a huge impact on OpenStreetMap if you're in that position. And I, I encourage everybody who feels like they have that one little step to, um, to try to do that. It's, it sounds like a whole lot of work. It sounds like you're in a really, like we're in a really important position, but it's, we're really just like you guys and um, we just happen to have been elected by other folks. So I encourage everybody to do that. And if I may uh, circle back to Martin's question, um, like one of the learnings that I've seen today is looking at our, um, our map and our tools and how we can make them uh, all of it more accessible um, and understandable to like a range of different types of, of, of people that are interested in the map. Um, so we're talking ab about user interface, for example, that this matters. And I think um, part of what we're trying to do um, in, in, as we enter our tween years um, in OpenStreetMap US is uh, making it uh, clearer for, for everyone about how we can participate um, and that includes like what does membership look like and what does it afford um, as well as you know what is the process of, of becoming a, a board member. I, I think a lot of times historically OpenStreetMap, um, but the, both US and the large uh, organization has been ob ob obfuscated you know by um, lots of different things and so our, our, we're looking for I think accessibility and clarity and um, and, and look forward to um, more people running, more uh, places for events, et cetera, you know, more, more types of connections, et cetera, like that. <laughs> it's I, oh, sorry. I had a, uh, a, some, a couple, well, I just wanted, before we leave, I was wondering if there were any announcements that were potentially like related to OpenStreetMap, like, um, or, 
Open Geo community um, that others in the room might be uh, interested to know about. Uh, this lovely woman here has one, so go ahead. State of the Map Africa will be hosted in November in Ivory Coast. Cote d'Ivoire, yes. Uh, and it'll be hosted the weekend before Thanksgiving, so I know all of you are free, so make sure to attend. Uh, it's also co-hosted on the first day with Understanding Risk, which is a conference about risk communication and, and understanding disaster risk management. There'll be people from government and, uh, and practitioners in the field. So looking forward to seeing you all there. Yes. So. Any, any other events? Uh that we should book our tickets to? No. If you're in the Seattle area or interested in being in the Seattle area in mid-October, um, Kugos, the local Open Geo chapter, um, has their big annual event. And annual event. Uh, and still looking for speakers. The deadline is September 13th. Um, I'll put something in the OSMUS Slack, a link. That's it? Yeah. Over there. <laughs> I, should mention the Slack. I believe it's sometime third week in November, Geography Awareness Week. We also co-brand that as OSM Geo Week. And it's a week full of mapathons and mapping where if you did see Jennings stats, um, it's usually a high point of the year, so look for more information on social media about that. And if you are able, it's a good time to host an event um, wherever you live. If, if you do have an event, um, be sure to put it on the OpenStreetMap calendar. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can ask me and I'll help you with that. Because that way, it also ends up in the weekly OSM newsletter, and uh, it gets more attention. So that's always a good thing. And I think it's been a little, it's, it's a little easier now than it was six months ago, even. So, uh, But if you need help, I'm here for you. Another state of the map is in November in Wellington, um, New Zealand, if, if you need a reason to, to go around the other side of the world. Um, Great, if you think of something, oh, oh there we go. Jeff. What is the US uh, lowercase c chapter doing at State of the Map International? Is there, a, are you getting together? How are you represented there at that meeting, which I know many of us have never been to? That's a tricky one. I'm, I'm attending the conference. Um, when I sign up, I did not, I'm not doing an official talk, but I am, going to meet some other um, groups and I have some meetings set up with the foundation and um, just trying to build some bridges with other local communities and uh, what else can I say about that? Yeah, just really starting to build relationships as well. I think we have a lot to share with um, emerging OpenStreetMap communities and I, I look forward to being able to share everything that we build here in the U.S. with, with anyone who wants it. Um, I was just curious about, um, do, is the OSM US Slack run officially by the um, organization, or is that just kind of an independent thing? Yeah, the, so the, he's asking about the OpenStreetMap US Slack, and that is um, maintained and run by the board, the organization, and um, you are all welcome to join. Um, you can join, your, basically you invite yourself uh, at slack.openstreetmap.us and there's a, a pretty good, there's a, a, a roughly 200 active people there every day um, chatting about OpenStreetMap. Um, it's not limited to just US stuff. If you want to talk about uh, development uh, like of software or you have tagging questions or whatnot, it's a good uh, resource for real-time communication. Um, there's other options as well, like IRC or the uh, forum or, or that, not, uh, that sort of thing, but uh, Slack is a pretty active place and pretty friendly as well. If I could offer some feedback um, that maybe in the future we look at um, 
maybe migrating to a platform that's a little more open. Um, maybe that allows people to view the conversations that are happening without being logged in, um, without creating a separate account. So um, maybe something like Riot IM or something along the line, but just something to consider. Yeah, that's good feedback. I, and we've heard that. Um, so the feedback is the, that uh, Slack, you have to sign in and it's not open source. And that, that's, um, at the time that the OpenStreetMap US Slack was set up, Slack was really the best out there in terms of collaboration and um, especially with the nonprofit discount that we have, which lets us do search. It is not Googleable, but it's searchable uh, forever if you want it to be inside Slack. Um, there's other platforms now that have kind of become more open and work almost as good as Slack. Um, and so we can think about that in the future, but uh, right now we have such a, a lot of momentum on that Slack that it's kind of hard to change. So we can talk about it as a community for sure. Any other questions? And, and I would say even like any observations from this weekend that you know, we as a board executive director should, should walk away with would be helpful. I think that is a really good segue into our, like we have a, a short list of announcements here, one of which is that we'll be sending out a feedback form uh, immediately after, like probably on Monday, we'll send it out so your brain is fresh um, and still thinking about this. Um, we'll send that out to your t the email that you used for tickets. Um, so keep that in mind and look out for that. That's a, a lot of the stuff that we're doing or that we did this year Things like captioning and uh, childcare, the food, the the way that the events were being handled um, or the talks were handled, that's all kind of reinforced by the feedback that you all give. So that's important. Go. All right. Um, with the videos will be posted uh, on YouTube as soon as possible. Uh, we will send out that link on your emails as well. And we'll also post it on Twitter and Slack and Facebook and Telegram and all the places that we can communicate. Um, we're not finished yet. We still have tomorrow. Sessions start at 9. And we will definitely have lunch as well. So the space closes at 2. So if there's any last minute meetings you wanted to have or birds of a feather, please try to fit as much as you want into the day. We will be doing a community survey over the next month uh, to help inform the strategic planning process. So look for that. And if you are OK with it, I'll send it to the email that you shared um, when you signed up for this event. If you don't want me to do that, let me know. Uh, look for an upcoming event. Uh, we're going to try to do quarterly hackathons or mapathons in different parts of the country. The next one will be for OSM Geo Week in November. And if you're interested in participating in hosting something in your town or being a part of that collaboration, uh, please reach out. For tonight, check the social board for some activities. Or if you have something in mind, just shout it out there. Or there's Sharpies and things there, too. If you just want to put it up Sharp. there, that'd be great. For tomorrow, if any of you are flying out in the next couple of days, the airport's under construction. So you might want to give a little more time. And there's also a football game tomorrow, and I believe that the public transportation goes through that uh, light rail stop where the stadium is. So that could be very exciting. <laughs> um, anything else I missed here? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Great. Thank you for a wonderful day. I look forward to tomorrow.